Greetings everyone. Welcome to my Discord board tutorial series. And in today's video, we're going to create a COVID-19 command um, where we will do some graph analysis um, in terms of da data science or data analysis. You can say it's going to be very simple, nothing very complicated. What we're going to do, we're going to pass in the command itself and the name of the country that we want to retrieve the data for. And it's going to say, it's going to show us the number of deaths and the months across from the starting of the beginning of the COVID till so whatever dates or months are available in the API um, that we are fetching this data from uh, will be presented in a graph. And uh, let's get started. First thing first, head over to my GitHub repository. The link will be down below in the descriptions, followed by other links that are really relevant to a tutorial. So each of the videos has their own relevant links. So what you want to go ahead and do, it's first thing, clone this repository because it follows up from the right of the beginning of the series till now. So you will have all the commands and you can just watch the videos. But do notice that by the time you I have uploaded this video, you will also have the very uploaded code present in this repo. repo. So you want to go ahead and clone if you have GitHub Git installed. And if you don't, then go ahead and click on download zip. We'll wait for the download. Once you have successfully downloaded and extracted the folder to your designated locations, Go ahead and open the PyCharm and open that folder. So I'm going to go ahead and click open from my PyCharm. So I have renamed my folder right here and it's called YouTube Tutorials. So I will go ahead and select that. And it should load the file and I'll go ahead and pose. Now in the previous video, you have seen that PyCharm should automatically um, prompt with the um, setting up entire file structures and installing all the required .txt files that are required within the package. Um, in some cases, what I did basically, I changed my folder names and whatnot. And you do you do the same modification and you come to this place and it doesn't do it. Then I'll go ahead and show you how to do it. If you're using another IDE, you can skip this part. It's probably going to be irrelevant for you. So I'm going to go ahead to files and go to settings. I'm going to go to um, project interpreter, which is under the project itself so there will be project and the name and then you can select the project interpreter which takes you to this menu you can see the toggles here and you can select the add and what it will do it will create a new environment for you right automatically so i'll go ahead and do that i'll leave whatever it is showing as it is and let's pause till it get prepared once you have successfully finished, go ahead and click OK here. And now you can open your terminal and we're going to manually install our packages to this environment. So on our readme files, you can see there's installation sections and there's a command to do the install, complete the installation of the old folder for the following packages. So I'm going to copy that, go to my PyCharm just where it says the terminals, I'm going to paste it there. So after the paste, I'm going to push the enter button. And this should start installing all the packages. Once you have successfully installed all the packages from requirements.txt file, then congratulations, you have completed the prerequisites. Um, just in case if you're having any issues, then head over to the uh, readme section of my uh, GitHub's um, repo, and you can see all the links down below there, the packages are that are used throughout the project, so you can manually install. Now you can head over to your discord.com slash developer slash applications and open up your bot applications and then go to the bot section itself from the drop down menu on the side and um, scroll down and ensure that your prison intents and server member intents are turned on. Um, and if you don't 
want them to use it then make sure you comment out in the python um file from my repository that you have downloaded um yep that should be in the main.py files then go ahead and copy the token of your bot then head over to the pycharm itself open the file env and here you can see token is equal to this variable is asking for discord bot token goes here so you're just going to remove that and paste your token there now we're going to create a one new directory to our overall project and two new python files so let's go ahead and create the directory first so right click on the main folder then select the directory and i'm going to call this directory apis right and within the apis i'm going to create a new python file and i'm going to call this python file covid api and that should do it i'll close the file for now and uh, go down to our command sections and what we're going to do over here, right click to our command files and we're going to create a new Python file there as well. So we're going to name this just COVID. And that should be it for folder structures and setting up the projects overall. Let's dive into each section of our project. Now for this project, we're going to fetch some live data from some public APIs in order to get the, uh, in order to achieve what we're trying to achieve. So there are tons of COVID data related to coronavirus are available on the internet. But for this particular, for this tutorial, I'm just going to use Postman um, COVID-19 API because it's easy to access and just ease of use, that kind of thing. Uh, feel free to use other services as you like. So you don't have to really particularly use this one. So what I'm going to do, open my Google Chrome uh, and go just go to my google.com and type in coronavirus COVID-19 API dash postman. Um, the reason because I'm asking you this just in case the um, link doesn't work for some reason. So and then you're going to select the one that has the document.getpostman.com, uh, anything that related to the postman itself. So I'm going to click on this link. And that should open up our API documentations. Um, you, what we're going to do, we, I'm, I'm just going to quickly prose through this documentation because I don't want to make it too long and stretch the video all the way across. Um, you can see there are some, uh, the method is uh, declared here, what type of uh, request we're going to send and some of the default methods and the URL that we're going to request and how the response body looks like. So you can actually go and start. Now to our copied um, API, if you remember, we created APIs folder where we generally thinking that we're going to uh, put all the API files in there. So that's the initial structure. So I'm going to go ahead and import JSON and then import URL and then lib.requests. And that's the one we're going to use to do so. And then define a new function. So COVID underscore API underscore request. And it's going to take some endpoint which I will explain on the next section of the video. And then we're going to have a COVID, we're going to take a new variable, call it COVID uh, request. And then URL, so this the URL that we're going to request at. So URL leave dot request dot requests. That's right, and pass in the default URL. So let, let us go back to the documentation real quick to the default sections. And all I'm going to do is graph that default endpoint for that. Uh, sorry, default URL for the request. So come back to our PyCharm, paste it there. And we're also going to pass in the endpoint. So endpoint. Right. And now let's load this object, whatever the request is coming, let's load this to a new variable and we're going to print and see how this behavior works overall, right? So let's say COVID request. 
and then we say data is equal to json.load and then we're going to pass in the url lib dot request dot and then url open and then we're going to pass in which url do you want to open so that will be a covid request url and then dot read and then finally we will decode that to utf standard 8 so decode and we're going to pass in the format which is pretty much simple utf8 that is correct and now we're going to print and test this method to see everything working successfully for us so i'm just going to quickly copy and paste it there and let's call the function outside the function body itself so covid request and then we're going to pass in some endpoint here and paste it there now you have forward slash there you can remove the forward slash right over here so this is just a general test to see um everything's working so not to worry what hasn't been copied on what hasn't been po po pasted so not to worry about this yet and um yeah, let's go ahead and test this. So we're going to save all and just run this COVID underscore API dot py files to see what we get in the return. So I'm just going to right click there and run. And we got some read object error. So let's take a look at that. So from the request URL, it should be good. And the COVID request data is equal to JSON dog loads. Oh, okay. Right, so it's S and then URL dot request. This should do it. So let's go ahead and run it. There you go. So we have the data. And now we're just going to return that for our um, command files so we can use that as an handler sort of stuff so i'm just gonna go ahead and do return here perfecto and uh, yeah that should do what's the problem here thing is indenting problem yeah um that should do right i'll go ahead and hit save real quick and we can close this down come to our covid command files where we're going to write the command and add the extension so let's go uh, let's let us go ahead and create the boilerplate real quick and um, i think we're going to do some imports um let me just quickly do that import discord and then import pandas so i'll 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 explain that library and to uh, one more library in a minute that we have to install and why do we require them so just import it as it is for now pandas spd and then from date time import date time so we're going to do some formatting in the date side uh, because api provides some sort of um, format that we have to be able to manipulate and then later on and now the metaplot, uh, meta plot. so M-A-T, matplot leave, I believe, yeah, matplot leave, that's the one we're gonna use. I'm just being cautious about the spelling. I tend to make too many errors on the spelling pi plot. That should be fine. And then we're gonna take our extension, so from Discord, this, God dot ext import commands and then we're going to import the file um, package level itself so the apis and then the function itself so from apis dot covid api import covid api request so that's the method name just to confirm again that's the case so i'll go ahead and close this and let's define our class real quick so class covid and which will take commands start 
cog because we're going to add that to our um, existing uh, modular system. So existing files, existing commands that we have running. So we're building up on top of that. Cool. And then we're going to define our initial method. So init, pretty standard, and which takes the bot itself. And we're going to say self.bot is equal to bot in and we're going to define the setup method so setup bot and then we're going to do is just add that to our bot extension so add bot dot add underscore cog which will take the class itself covid and covid takes the bot perfect uh, let's quickly format these right Cool, everything looks good apart from these reds. So we're gonna solve them now. So I'm gonna hit save. Let's quickly open up our terminal and let's head us uh, to the web LAN browser real quick. And the following links will be found down below in the descriptions again. So the first library we're gonna install is matplotlib and the second one is pandas. They're widely used across the data science uh, field or data analytics. Um, they really help uh, bringing the data um, to um, visualizations. So you have some data given and you some visualize based on the data and show the results. That's all they do, but there are a lot of things that goes behind it um, that helps to build, you know, in today's data science world and and i believe this is these tools are amazing uh, they are just one of them there are many more like uh, numpy etc so let's go ahead and do the installations for Mat Pat matplot leave so installation sections I'm going to click on installation sections and you can see installing an official release and there is the link and the command itself. So I'm going to copy this, come back to a pie chart, open up the terminal. If you have any other ideas, make sure you open up your terminal and then install them. So I'm going to hit enter here and it will start collecting. And while it's doing, I'm just going to go to back to the browser and same goes for pandas, amazing library. I believe they're C optimized library. They're really quick and um, fast to, in terms of doing some machine learning and stuff, if you're interested in that. So I'm going to click on getting started. And let's wait the web page to respond to me. In this case, it's just, we're just installing to do some little portion of that. So which is pip install pandas. I'm just going to copy this, head over to our PyChamp and Okay, the installation is still going, so we'll wait for installation to finish for matplotlib. And finally, we have successfully installed the matplotlib. Now we're going to paste our previous command that we just copied, uh, which is for the pandas. And I will push enter here once I have typed in the installation command. And uh, let's just pose for pandas to install. So we have now successfully installed pandas. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close my terminal and it should in, it should index the pandas as it has seen and it's all good in a minute. So let us come back to the documentation of the API itself real quick. And I'm gonna scroll, um, select from the uh, menu down here, the day one and I'm gonna use the day one old status. This is the following one. And just have a look and analyze that what we need. So it takes the day one that the country and then the country name itself. So this is how we're going to structure that. We're gonna take a input, the, the name, the, the country name as an input from the user. And we're gonna pass into our URL, right? And then let's have a look what it gives. So basically we have a country, we have country code and then latitude and longitude and then cases, status confirmed and the dates. Right. So this is the date that we're going to work on and uh, format that to get a month. 
and then basically then we're going to get the cases the number of cases we're going to go, we're going to show that on our x-axis and the y-axis is going to be our month um, if you can recall the example that i have showed in the beginning of the video so let's go ahead and do that real quick so we're going to go to the PyCharm and everything should be fine now to write our first command. So let's go ahead and do our decorator. So add commands dot command. And I'm going to take async functions, async to find COVID. So that's the, um, the, the command itself. And after self, it's going to take the context as the CDX. And then we're also going to take another parameter from the user. So user has to has to give the country name. So I'm going to call this country here. Right. And now we're going to pass that country into our request endpoint URL. So let's go ahead and do that request. And then result is equal to COVID API request. So you can see now it has lightened up. So we're gonna use our COVID API um, file itself and then function. So let's go ahead and type in the F string literals because we're gonna pass in the country um, variable there. So we need to format that string and it's gonna be, so let's have a look. It's going to be the day one, I believe. So let me go back uh, real quick. So it's going to be day one, country and name. So I'm just going to copy from just from the day one. Remember, we have passed in the forward slash to our default URL and up to the country. So let's go ahead and copy, go to PyCharm, paste it there okay there you go and pass in the country as the other input that we're taking so that's for the url absolutely fine now we're going to make that a data set because when you plot in a graph you need some sort of data set so we're going to make that one for us ourselves because we don't have any files given or anything we just getting a data from an API. So in order to do that, we need to iterate through the data and get the necessary things that we need. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna call this data set. And now you could do this simpler way of writing two for loops, but I'm just not gonna do that because um, I'm just gonna write a comprehension where I will pass in a zip functions where it will iterate through two times where you can write two loops. But in Python, you can write a comprehensions, list comprehensions that you can pass in as many as data as you like, and it will iterate through and get each element or index value of that. So we're gonna do that. So you get to learn something new while I'm doing it. You, you probably have noticed that my previous uh, tutorials I have used such as like enumerate, um, range, for loops and stuff. So it is just um, as I'm, I'm creating this video for the educational purposes, I try to bring something different and show that it could be possibly could be achieved through python in various ways so feel free to use whatever you want and i'm hope i hope that you are learning to and enjoying this stuff so i'm going to take an comprehension and within this comprehension what's going to happen it's going to have index and another index so ij obviously these are really bad names i know i'm just going to i'm just showing this what's going to happen just bear with me for i for i j in a zip and within the zip what's going to happen is that we're going to iterate two times I do apologize for that iterate two times over the same um data so and we're going to get two different index for them right that's all going to happen so this is in a simpler way to show it so i'm just going to get rid of this because i do know the naming convention is not right and i'm not happy with that so let's take a bracket over here real quick i'm going to call the date time so i'm going to format my each index date time date strip and let's call this date index because i need the date each date right so and then let's let's call date from here date object itself 
and then I'm going to pass in the format of that they're asking. So if you recall the format, so the year, month, um, and then I think dates and then time, uh, minute, hour, minute, seconds. So we need to pass that in and we're going to format that to a month, just a month. I don't want that all, all over the things, but I just want the month from that. So let's go ahead and do that. So Y for a year, dash, and then modulus and a small month, M, and then dash, and then modulus, and then small D for date. And then I'm gonna pass in the time, so capital T, modulus, hour, colon, modulus M, capital M for minutes, and then call on again, and then capital S with the modulus, and then Z. So that satisfies the format they're asking for. And now we're gonna shift that. And so we're gonna strf, strf, time, and then colon, and then I'm gonna pass in the modulus B. Right, I need to check why that is not coming. So daytime dot strf. Okay, all right, I see. So I made a mistake, so that should be strip. strp. Yeah, I'm gonna strip that time and format that. And don't worry about the thread, we're gonna solve that in a minute. And back to our bracket and so after this one and I'm gonna put a comma and then we we won the number of deaths right so death index pretty scary naming convention there and then we're gonna pass in deaths right and we're gonna say now that for date I think it's a date index there yeah, for a date uh, index for date index and then the death index in in zip and then basically let's get that variable here and here. So I'm just going to push this one down so it's clear a little bit. So again, I'll just like I showed you before, there are going to be two indexes. They're going to iterate through two different data that we're looking for. Uh, and in the with it, whether it's same or different, it doesn't matter. So it, this will be still fine if it was another variable and whatnot. Um, so you can see the results and we pass in the use the zip functions and that does the job for us. Perfect. And now we can move to the plot sections where we're gonna use the pandas to um, kind of yeah, get our data frame and load this data frame to our plot. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so let's comment this one out uh, real quick. We're gonna say plot, the first thing first, plot, and then we're gonna label our plots and we're gonna add a legend to our plot graph and then basically we're going to add a color so I'm going to do some colors and then finally save the image itself and then send it pretty pretty standard right so let's do our first one which is going to be data frame is equal to and we're going to call our panda so you remember panda as pd so we're going to do that pd dot data frame and within that frame, we're going to pass in our data set. So data set, there you go. And now we're going to plot a graph. So data frame dot plot. And let's open a bracket when then we're going to give our axis. Axis is equal to zero and Y axis is equal to one. And then we're going to set our color for our um, the graph itself. So equals to and then I'm just going to pass in color. You can write, you can type in the color like this and that will do, you can pass in hexadecimal, hexadecimal values, RGBA values. Uh, if you read the documentation, it, it's got a ton of information that what, uh, what the matplotlib accepts the color code as in. Um, so I'm going to pass in a color that I want. So it'll be hash 00012C. Uh, I'm just going to do capital here. 
want to see and then I'm going to level my y, uh, y axis real quick so I'm going to say label is equal to and I want that label to be month right so that goes for the plot now let's add the labels that we want to do for x axis and y axis and title itself so pi plot um, pi plot dot title and we're gonna say f string literals here because on the title I want to show uh, that what country is it for but I don't I don't want to manually type in country because oh, you're already taking the country as input from the user itself so I'm gonna say showing that's in and then we're gonna pass in country here and that should do it and then we're gonna do our x x label and y axis label by plot dot x label and the and it's gonna be month and pi plot pi plot dot y label oops it's gonna be y label that is correct and we're gonna say number of deaths a number of deaths that's correct and that should be fine now we're going to position our legend that we have so pi plot dot legend and we're going to pass in the location so lock is equal to with single strings i'm going to say upper left And that should be fine. Now let's finally add a color to our um, axis, um, the, the border itself. So you probably see in the background color is white and then be the color within the axis areas where it actually is drawn, which is red, and then the graph itself is blue. So I kind of keep it as um, you know color to match uh, to with my thumb thumbnail of the video. But feel free to use whatever you like. Uh, that, that would be a good experiment for YouTube. So pi plot dot axis um, yep axis dot set um, face color face C -O -L -O -R, color and then we're gonna pass in a color so I'm gonna say hash 9a16222 um, now one thing guys, I know those were expert, they might come and butcher me here, uh, that the way I've directly used the PyPlot itself, yeah, I should have loaded to another variable and whatnot. Um, just to let you know that this was a basic example and I don't want it to keep it too much complete, uh, complicated by loading different um, functions to a new variable and then calling it separately but you should actually consider doing that apparently they it is considered as best practices in this case so yeah just to let you know that uh, before you are raging over this so let's go ahead and save our file so i'm going to say pi plot because my tutorials are more targeted for the beginner level who are just starting and uh, just for their survival, survival point just something really basic, but also achieving what we want to achieve at a high standard. Save, we, sorry, while I'm talking, I did forget what I'm exactly doing. So save figure. So we're gonna save the figures. And um, I think for Windows, I'm gonna use the backslash, uh, but for Mac and OS and Linux, you can use forward slash, you'll be fine. So I'm just gonna use double backslash that gives, satisfies the Windows need. So assets, so that's where I'm gonna save this. So assets, and then within there, I'm just gonna name the file itself. So it's gonna be COVID, COVID underscore death, and then graph, PNG. That's the format I'm gonna pass in. And now what happens is that sometimes when your text it gets uh, lengthy, um, the, the, the border itself tends to kind of like curved in. So I, I want everything to be stuck together and nothing gets missing. So I'm going to set the box inches. So B, B, O, X, 
I N C H E S is equal to, I'm going to say tight. And that should do the job, right? And let's send this file. So await ctx.send. I'm going to say file here. File is equal to discord.file. And let's call the file location. Oops, spelling mistake. Discord. And let's give the file location again. So I'm just going to copy this one because it's going to be the same. Copy this and paste it here. And that should do this, All right? And that should be fine. Everything looks good to me. Let's go ahead and save. And let's hit run and see uh, the command if everything's working perfectly. So we're gonna run our command main file, which is the main.py here and go ahead and hit run. And that should pull our bot online in a second. Our bot is online, so I'm gonna go to my browser and open Discord from there. And let's go ahead and type in the command here. So the command itself is COVID, the standard. And then part after that, it takes the argument of a country itself. So we're gonna say united-kingdom and press enter there. And we should see a result in a second. So there you go. And our result is shown. So you can see the title showing here, showing deaths in United Kingdom, number of deaths, and uh, the number itself on the x-axis and the y-axis is the month. So you can see the, card, the graph is growing up there. So yes, I think we have successfully done the command itself, the implementation of it. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Sorry about the background noise. I think uh, some of my neighbors are having a very rough day. And so unfortunately there were too many background noises. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this. If you feel um, this was useful, give it a thumbs up to the videos. And if you can, uh, if you like the overall, um, the the tutorials, then consider subscribing if you're new and whatnot. Stay safe, and I'll see you on the next tutorial soon. Bye.